session border controllers, one of the major uh, advantages is to implement security in uh, voice over IP networks. And one of the main functions of, of an SBC is to protect against denial of service and distributed denial of service attacks. So how does the SBC do that, Alan? Yep. Oh, this is a super popular question uh, that turn, has turned up on a number of the webinars because we keep talking about, you know, the, the denial of service or de distributed denial of service. Just a quick reminder, DOS and DDoS um, attacks, that's, you know, set typical network implementation. You've got some application on the right. This could be in a hosted environment or in an enterprise environment, uh, asterisk, or it could be a big call server, or it could be um, Broadsoft, it could be any one of the applications. To the left, usually you have to expose um, to the internet because um, you want to be able to have people connect from home and remote offices. And there's a couple things that tend to happen. One of them either is just sort of brute force attacks where people are trying to break in um, to get into, into the network to make phony phone calls, or uh, there are situations where bots are used to um, flood traffic into the application, try to you know, make a huge number of registrations or to um, you know, send certain select messages to the application to get it to uh, trip up and, and choke on all these messages. And by doing so, you could, you know, the bad guy's thought process is, is that I'm going to choke your application to the point where it's non-functional. And therefore, um, it's usually combined with some kind of um, extortion attempt, right? You get an email, if you don't pay me so many Bitcoin by noon, um, <laughs> I'm gonna take your call center down or whatever it might be and then they, uh, they try to flood it. So how does the SBC um, put an end to this and how does it um, stop these kinds of attacks? Well, a couple of things. First of all, SBCs in some cases include built-in firewalls. In other cases, they command or um, remotely control a firewall. So they can do some of the trimming by controlling the port numbers that are being used. But the, a key thing is managing dynamically this firewall environment and by looking at the SIP session, knowing, okay, so I should open the UDP ports for this particular session. And then on top of that, having you know, the smarts to say that the gee whiz, we negotiated a G711 session, so I should be getting 64 kilobits per second on this UDP port. All of a sudden, I'm seeing 128 kilobits per second or more. Something's wrong. And, and then, of course, then shutting it down because it's clearly fraudulent or to be able to manage it from either a blacklist or a whitelist, which of course, if you're firewall folks, you know what that means, or bandwidth management, meaning saying that from this particular network, I should be expecting a certain amount of bandwidth, or I should be expecting a certain call rate by calls per second and deflecting some of the bad traffic uh, or traffic above and beyond what's expected from that particular call leg. And one of the key things about session border controllers is that it's very important that they can keep up with this processing of detecting and protecting against them. And what we call line rate speed processing, right? Being able to look at the packets at, as fast as they possibly can come over the wire uh, and either reject or respond to them is um, very, very important. And efficiency is really, really critical to be able to effectively pull this off. Yeah, the, that's right. Uh, and so denial of service attack is is all about flooding a system or overwhelming a system um, in order to pre prevent it from functioning properly. Thanks for listening. I hope you found this content useful. And don't forget to share this with any other your coworkers or others who might be interested. Also, don't forget to click on subscribe and there's links below.